Welcome to Dare to Dream podcast, which has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards and a Webby Award. Dare to Dream on air and on podcasts for over 13 years is ranked in the top best podcasts in self-improvement in all of the USA and on Apple Podcasts and YouTube and many of the top podcasts in multiple other countries. Thank you as our listeners for making that so. Debbie Dashinger is a certified coach whose expertise is visibility in media. She coaches you how to write a page turner book privately or in groups, takes your book to a guaranteed international bestseller, and pulls back the curtain so you have the system to be interviewed on media and podcasts and get massive results. Debbie shows people how to find and use media exposure to locate your tribe fill workshops, sell books, and gain positive exposure. You can get your free tools and templates for being interviewed on media and figuring out what your message is at debbiedashingercom slash message. That's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash message. Get your free tools today. Dare to make your dreams a reality. Debbie Dashinger puts the inspiration back into podcasts with this talk show about cutting edge success. It is your number one transformation conversation. Do you want to learn how spontaneous action is the doorway to more? Well, my guest today is Rebecca Dawson, who has been a channel for information about the earth, the human race, and other planetary systems for over 20 years. Her identity and view of the world changed dramatically when she was 18 years old after she spontaneously became a channel which wasn't part of her plan for life, as she was enthusiastically at the time studying to become an architect. Now, for over 20 years, after thousands of hours expressing the wisdom of aspects like St. Germain, Kuthumi, and Serapis Bay, Rebecca offers the latest channeled information on the current state of humanity and the planet, the mechanics of dimensional reality, and the nature of consciousness. Rebecca Dawson is the author of three books and lives in Perth, Australia. To learn more about her, go to RebeccaDawson.net. Debbie Dashinger, Dare to Dream podcast. I am here with Rebecca Dawson. And Rebecca, welcome to the show. It's great to have you. Thank you, Debbie. I'm very happy to be here with you. Right before we started the recording, we were laughing a bit and talking about COVID. And it got me really curious uh, when you were saying, now you're working from home and you're somebody who's worldwide. You've been delivering what you do, channeling, speaking, teaching. So now that you are not worldwide, just because of the pandemic, um, how are you managing it? And I guess more precisely, how do people receive your information? Are you doing online workshops? How how do you teach and connect with people these days? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't too much of a hit really, other than my wanderlust got put to to bed for a little while, because I do like to travel. I like to be on the move and change scene quite a bit. But um, really, I was already set up online. So I do a lot of my seminars and um, courses um, through through Zoom, um, because people that like to participate and explore with with myself and the masters are all over the world so it hasn't been too much of a hiccup other than um you know I guess for my own sensorial pleasure (laughs) of changing location but you know Wes I think it's such a a wonderful opportunity for us as humanity to consider how multi-dimensional we really are Mm. and so many people have commented that you know they normally like to come and see me in person or come to my events physically and yet they still feel the same vibrational connection. They still feel that sense of community and that amplification of group energy coming together online, you know, because we do have that capacity. We don't have to be location specific to feel connected to each other. And I think that's a really great thing about this year. Oh, that's so great. I like how you piece in the multidimensionality because truly, everything is energy and energy is everywhere. So we are everywhere at the same time. I agree. And 
I was fascinated. What I love about your story, I mean, this is my favorite story. Somebody who's headed down a path and, and you completely are not into the spiritual stuff. Channeling would have been the last thing on your mind. You're headed down a path and a career. And then all of a sudden something else presents when you're 18 years old. Can you talk a little bit about that and what that was like? Sure. Well, look, I, I was fortunate. I did have a little bit of a spiritual foundation in there as well. I was originally raised Catholic, but because I've always had the capacity to see things and hear things and and uh, and and feel things that um, perhaps are outside the normal realms of what we think we can do as humans, I was very lucky because my my mum kind of put me into meditation classes when I was quite young. So I had a spiritual awareness, but it was never, it was always for me something that was the foundation of how you live your life, but wasn't something that you necessarily do or put all of your energy into. Um, and so for me, you know, I really wanted to be an architect and uh, I was at university um, and suddenly spontaneously one day I had this experience of full-blown channeling and it was it was very very disruptive for me um I think it was great for the person that was receiving the message at the time <laughs> because uh, I mean different people channel in different ways I'm, I'm a voice channel so you know um it's a very direct message it's to the point um and I think that when you start activating those capacities which I believe we all have it's our right to be able to access cosmic wisdom and wisdom beyond what our brains can currently ascertain that's what makes us evolve that's what makes us more conscious um, I think that it does change the way that your brain operates and so for me it was disruptive because my brain started to operate in a very different way and I started to access different parts of my brain I could actually feel that happening um, the difficulty for me was that while all that was happening and all these capacities were really full blown coming online is that the logical sequential linear parts of my brain that, that did all the regular day to day processing wasn't getting much airtime. And so <laughs> I found that incredibly disruptive because <laughs> I would go through zones where I just couldn't think about what was right in front of me or process what was right in front of me. But then there'd be these huge awarenesses of you know, macroscopic views of, of how galaxies work or how time works or you know, how do you put all that into one place? So that's really been a journey over the last 20, 25 years, how to get everything functioning together in one place so that you can still be here, but still have your multidimensional capacity as well. Wow. Here and there all at the same time. Interesting. That's right. And can you share a little bit about who do you channel? I know it's not really a who, it's often a conglomerate, but can right. you talk a little bit about what energies come through you and perhaps give them their names? Sure. So um, as, as I understood channeling to be at the time, there were different, um, I guess, discarnate beings that came through. Uh, the first one that I had that came through in the beginning uh, was Serapis. His name was Serapis, who I've since learned was Serapis Bay. And then I had uh, Saint Germain and Kuthumi come in as well over the years. I've had many others sort of step in. I, I call them guest speakers, depending on what the content is. Sometimes we do get, you know, more uh, intergalactic or interdimensional beings that come through depending on the content. Uh, sometimes there'll be, you know, something that's added to a particular seminar about whatever mechanics of reality we're looking at. But those are the three that uh, normally come through. And sometimes they come through as individuals. They have very different flavors and you can always kind of tell which one's which. Um, and these days they tend to come through more as a group energy. That is so cool. And it's so interesting to hear you say that, Rebecca, because I had no idea that intergalactic ever came through you. And it just goes to speak to, you know, everything for me is energy. If I try to live my life from logic, uh, at some extent, my life will not be successful. But if I just sense what is presented, I will receive a yes or a no, even if, you know, there's some back and forth, and I can allow that emotional wave for a little bit. I, but it was very clear when your publicist presented you to me, I got a like, she's coming on. I, I want Rebecca. And so it's beautiful to hear that your channeling is 
that multidimensional, extra dimensional, that it's not just the energies that are coming here, but it's also galactic as well, because I'm totally into that. So this makes yeah. sense to me. Well, it wasn't, it's not something I talk about a lot, actually, but it, it has surprised me the way that the channeling's gone over the years, because when I first started, it really had that flavor. And, and it's not something I normally talk about publicly, actually. So some of my, um, my regular listeners might be surprised to hear this, but throughout my childhood, I had a lot of experiences with that side of things that um, I couldn't really talk about. My parents were aware of it. Um, I think they did their best to kind of manage it without having any understanding of how they could help me with that. Um, and when the master started coming through and I really started to channel more about the earth reality and the impending paradigm shift and the new human capacities, I had a bit of trouble kind of within myself reconciling all of this very earth-based content with the first part of my life, which was very much otherworldly and it's only just now that it's all starting to come together in one place so I feel more comfortable talking about it now but there was a large period of my life where I where I just didn't speak about it at all and um, when you say it's coming together now is that because of what is happening on the planet right now or is that because there is a marriage finally occurring for you in everything you've been and are doing I think both I think both. I think, and I love the way that you word that. I think that union and that um, convergence is actually happening for all of us as humanity and as a collective. I don't think we can separate ourselves out as human or other. I think that humanity and what I'm understanding is humanity in itself is such an incredible creative species. You know, we're not earth specific. <laughs> And when you say that, may I ask you, when you say we're not earth specific, Rebecca, do you mean because we're actually hybrids? Um, well, I think that, you know, from everything that I've been understanding is that humanity is, is an intergalactic species. And, and, you know, this is the first time I've ever spoken about this in such a candid way. Humanity is an, inter, an interplanetary intergalactic and indeed an interdimensional species. What we find ourselves in here at this time is, is the human experience within a third dimensional fourth dimensional reality um, and we've been you know existing within this reality or aspects of us have for quite some time and it's time for a reality shift and I think that as that reality shift occurs we become more aware of the expansive nature of humanity that we're not contained to this reality but this is just one portion of our experience um, and and certainly I think probably anybody that's really looked into this, there's certainly more information emerging at this time about uh, aspects of humanity in other places as well. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Thank you for entrusting because this is, uh, to me, the conversation. I, it excites me so much. I've never had a conversation like this, so this is interesting. <laughs> no one asks these questions. <laughs> Well, you have put out quite a body of work. You've written several books. This is your most recent, what a great color too, uh, The Agreement and The Heart Chakra. I love this color. And well, let me start here. What is The Agreement? How would you typify that? We, well, how we would describe The Agreement in a nutshell is it's a principle for life. And it's a principle for life, not in third and fourth dimensional reality as we've come to understand it, which is cause and effect, but it's a principle for life in fifth dimensional reality and beyond, which is the true nature of our humanity, actually. Humanity is being distilled into a point of focus that is 3D and 4D. It's, it's a very, it's a very um, concentrated portion of what we're capable of. So the agreement really is the principle of life and, and natural law and resonance and how we actually operate naturally as humans what we were designed to be how we were designed to create because that's what we forget to do we're a creator species and it's all based on that principle of being in agreement with life and agreement with ourselves because what humanity does in its sense of duality is we do not agree with ourselves we don't agree with our thoughts we don't agree with our feelings we actually don't even agree with our own existence. Our own existence is considered to be a problem or problematic. 
and our whole journeys and whole lives are all about improving or trying to perfect ourselves as the problem. And that is the fundamental misunderstanding that can so easily come back into a place of wholeness so that we can really be empowered and sovereign again as, as a species and as, uh, as a collective. And, you know, I think that's everything that's happening now on the planet is encouraging us to get back into that place where we actually agree with ourselves. Mm, wow. You know, that is such a huge concept that you just said it. It's like one of those experiences when you go out to a meal and you eat something delicious and it's like, you don't even want to talk. You just want to be with the food. That's how big that was in your book. And I, I, I just found this profound that you said, and I'm going to paraphrase that basically we would not look out to the stars and say, oh, stars, you're not right universe, you know, there's something off with you, sky, you're wrong. So why is it that we look at our bodies, for instance, and say, you are wrong. You, you are not made correctly. There's something inherently off about you. And I thought, oh, I've never heard uh, the judgment and the criticism that we hold of our physical selves, which is so prevalent, said like that. And it really gave me a way to view it and understand it. And I think have a lot of physical human compassion while reading that. Yeah. And that, that fracturing of wholeness just there, seeing ourselves as a problem or something that's not there yet, we're not there yet. That's the whole fundamental principle of duality that keeps us in this third and fourth dimensional space. It's, it's, the, it's the underlying fracturing that, that is the whole foundation of this earth reality that we have known. And we've been in really for about 330, 340,000 years. So it, it's such a simple thing, dimensional mechanics, because all it takes is a slight shift in view, a slight shift in the way that we see ourselves, not in the way that we see the world, but the way that we see ourselves. That slight shift is enough to shift you into a different dimensional reality. It's the subtlest movement. Can you facilitate that? What, is there a way that you can show us how can we learn or embody that alignment? So with self, feelings, body, uh, life, all of that. Well, that's the agreement. That's the book. <laughs> that's what it's designed to do. That's why it goes through the body, the mind, thoughts, belief, relationships, um, because they are the pillars of our existence. And they're all the things you think about body, thought, belief, relationship, um emotions that's a big one we're always trying to correct and sort those out we don't agree with our emotions most of the time if we come into agreement with those pillars of our existence we come into agreement with ourselves and that subtle subtle shift in view is enough it's enough and it's such a beautiful invitation to drop into the wholeness of who we are that's our empowerment humans are very powerful Right. Yes. Uh, Marianne Williamson said it best, saying we're not afraid of failure, we're afraid of our own power, which I think is abundantly correct. And, um, you know, it reminds me as I hear you saying that, that, um, gosh, decades ago, I read the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, which, by the way, I think is, was probably a downloaded book. I think there's such wisdom in that book. And I remember this. Um, it's something that a lot of people in AA, and I'm not, a, I'm not an alcoholic or anything, but I just found it fascinating that they, they say in the big book, and acceptance is the answer to all my problems for today. And I remember reading it and understanding, okay, well, that means if you accept your an alcoholic or a drug abuser or a gambler or, you know, fill in the blank, overeater, et cetera. If you can accept it, that's the answer to all your problems. And I remember having this epiphany when I was in my twenties and suddenly thinking, oh my God, what if I applied this to emotions? Because mm. back then being angry was not okay. 
And I used to stuff it and avoid it and modulate it. And one day I said, let me just practice that and sit with, okay, I'm angry. What if I just fully accepted that I am angry, that I have a right to be angry? Whoa. And what happened was the biggest surprise because within seconds, and it's not why I did it, within seconds, not only had I fully embraced that emotion, but it actually completely transmuted and was gone. So accepting it was freedom. I didn't even have to be with it anymore, or I could choose to take action or, or, or. But I, I find that very profound, this alignment, this agreement, this acceptance is actually the way out. It's the way through and out. That's what I hear you saying. I love that because the only way out is in. And I think it's, it's you know, there's, there's a very popular spiritual philosophy to be in agreement with what's happening in life. And that can be very helpful and profound. What we forget to do is be in agreement with ourselves. So even then being in agreement with something that's beyond you, there's still a sense of separation there. The next, the next um, invitation there is to completely be in agreement with yourself. And when you are in agreement with an emotion or a thought that you're having or a choice that you're making or however your experience is appearing in that moment, being in agreement with it brings it to completion. It's total. Everything is born to be created to come into completion. And as soon as you're in agreement with its existence, it has an opportunity to come into completion, to come into a spherical form. That's the way I like to see it. It's full, it's complete. Now what's the next thing? So it gives it an opportunity to complete itself so that something new can emerge. And yet what we find in our third and fourth dimensional reality that we're in is that when we approach something as a problem, it becomes a cycle that we have to continually attend to. And it never really goes away. It might ebb and flow like the tide, but it's always there, which is why it's so difficult to resolve trauma or to resolve um, things that we don't want anymore unless we bring it to a point of completion. And the way to bring it to a point of completion is to totally agree with its existence. Because as soon as we try to disagree with the existence of something, we're moving into separation with it. As soon as you move into separation, now you've got to negotiate with it. <laughs> and around we go. And there's the karmic cycle. You see how it's all set up. <laughs> yeah, how incredibly disempowering. Wow. And so when you say that, I wonder, in what ways is humanity awakening to the sovereign inherent power of source? Oh, that's a, wow, what a statement. You know, you have a real gift with words. That's, that's beautiful. I don't even know if that's a question that can be answered. You just said it in such a complete way, <laughs> like it's a statement. Um, I think really this time and this year, we're being challenged because we're being challenged to say, you can't connect well with others. You can't integrate in the way that you normally would. You need to go into isolation. You need to come back to yourself. And while that can feel like separation, it's actually an invitation back to where wholeness begins, which is within us. And once we go there, we can really understand what connectivity is because we can't connect through separation. And that's what humans have been trying to do for so long is to feel that they belong, feel like they're not on the outside looking in and try to connect from an external, uh, an external route rather than going within to connect. And this is, brings us back to the beginning of our conversation when you were asking about how this is working with webinars this year. People are feeling more connected than ever before because now they're connecting from their internal space and feeling that belongingness and that convergence instead of trying to do it through an external effort of trying to connect with people, which can take a lot of energy, a lot of focus. It's hit and miss, <laughs> trial and error. It's a, it's a challenge. It's not resonance based. Is there a, a tip, like some kind of major tip that you can give for unlocking limitation so that we can create at the level of which we actually are creators in a quantum physics way? I know that's a big ask, but I really would no. love to, like open the door a little it's very bit. Simple. It's very simple. Hmm. The way we've learned to create and manifest 
in our third, fourth dimensional reality is to have an idea about what we want and then project energy or to put some kind of focus and either draw it to us or move towards it. So there's some distance there. That's how a lot of people will see linear type goal setting or manifesting. In order for that to, to, to work in a mechanical way, we have to have the thought about what we want first, we have to have an idea about what we want to create. But if you have an idea about what you want to create, that creation already exists or that has already been done at some point, either in history or it's referenced elsewhere in society or it's happened back in another life, all of these inspirations. In order for us to truly create, we need to look at what creation is. And creation is coming up with something completely new that hasn't yet been conceptualized. It's very different to repetition. And we're so used to repetition because we've been doing it for over 300,000 years. We have come to believe that repeating things or creating a new permutation of something that already exists is creation and it's not. Creation in itself is birthing something completely new. And in order to do that, we really have to let go of the thought at the beginning of that process, which means that to really begin to create, we need to let ourselves drop into the space of, I don't know. I have no idea what I want. I have no idea what's possible. I have, for many people, the stage they go through is, I don't even know who I am or what I'm doing anymore. I don't know what my identity is. So this kind of existential crisis that happens for people when they go through a big spiritual shift is the precursor to dropping back into creation. Because when we go within and into that void space within, we're accessing the cosmic mind. We're dropping through the mind, the mind brain that knows something, which is all memory based, into cosmic mind. We sit in the space of I don't know and creation arises. Something completely new can happen. And in order to new, in move into a new earth reality, we have to begin to create completely new things, not new versions of what we already know, but completely new. And that involves being comfortable with not knowing. I want to, I want to take something through this at, with your guidance. So I have some knowing of what you're talking about. I want, I want a deeper example. So for instance, I have had a hip issue for four years on and off, but it's really honestly since March of this year, big time. And I have done everything I know possible to show up various doctors, x-rays, et cetera, to take a look at it. Cause I'm very active and I'm very frustrated and I'm, I'm really tapped out at being in pain all the time. So the good news is after I, my, doctor said, well, I think you have severe arthritis. You probably need hip replacement, which to me was unthinkable to have invasive surgery. So what I did while I was having x-rays is I went inside every day for a week and visualized all, this he all these healing molecules in my knees and my hips and rearranging everything because everything's energy. We can do that. The beautiful thing is when I went to my doctor, he said, I'm shocked at your x-rays. You don't have arthritis. In fact, what I'm seeing is so good, but I still don't know what's wrong with you. Now we need MRIs. So there's also this incredible level of frustration, but without a doubt, much to your point, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if there's a message. I don't know. Surrender, it's, you know, keep taking action. So if I would like to create, and clearly I would be creating something brand new, uh, new functionality, new hip something, what could I or anybody listening and watching do who might have some kind of chronic pervasive experience on any level to mm -hmm. rearrange that and have a whole new outcome and choice and creation that they really prefer? I think, again, it's being in complete agreement with the experience and what's happening. So you're going through it with a hip. I'm going through it with a heart issue. I had a heart attack eight weeks ago. I was in hospital again twice this week. 
I'm in really good health. I'm young. I don't have a history of any kind of issues. The doctors have no idea what's causing it. So a very similar situation, different part of the body. And the more that we see it as a problem that needs to be resolved, um, you know, there's some temporary relief that you can do through visualizations and meditations. Again, we are addressing it and negotiating with it. Mm -hmm. And this is a challenge for me too, because I've worked as a medical intuitive for many years and, and healing practice. And so this has really disrupted my way of thinking too, when the masters begin to bring this information through. Now my invitation is to be in wonder with it and miss the mystery and the curiosity because when something's a mystery and something is a curiosity, it's an invitation. It's like a portal opens and it's an invitation for a creation to emerge rather than if something's a mystery, it needs to be solved. And this is indeed what the original mystery schools on the planet were all about. They, you didn't go to a mystery school to solve the problem. You went to a mystery school to sit in the unknown so that something new could emerge. And so with our own bodies, your hip, my heart, to sit in that space and say, this is so interesting. I wonder what's going to happen next. And it, what it does is it gives your body permission to actually become more than it was before. And I truly believe that at this time on the planet, the human physical form is evolving so quickly. Our DNA is changing. We're moving from a two strand to a four strand to a spherical, spherical form and beyond. The capacity of the body is changing. The endocrine system, the nervous system is changing. The heart's changing. We've known that for a long time now. Hips. There's a lot of stuff that's changing there because there's been a lot about restraint in the genetic lines around the hips, mm -hmm. a lot about restraint. Oh. So rather than seeing it as a problem, it's like, wow, what's emerging from that space? I wonder what's going to happen next. I wonder what the body's going to be able to do. I wonder what it's birthing at this time. And every time I sit in that space, it's almost like a new surge of vitality comes. I'm not negotiating with it. I'm watching it as a portal to see what's going to come out. Because if we know that we're in a dimensional reality, where there is an unknown, there is a space in the fabric, a hole in the fabric appears. And when a hole in dimensional fabric appears, it allows something else to be introduced it allows something new to come through. And indeed, that's the transition between the old earth and the new earth. We've got two dimensional fabrics. There's holes appearing in the third dimensional fabric. We're seeing it everywhere. The systems are stretched, everything's stretched. The unknown is where the birthplace is. So for our bodies at this time, a lot of us are going through what we've been calling ascension symptoms. We've been talking about this for about 12 or 14 years now, regularly. They are openings, little portals in the body where new DNA codes can emerge, where new functionality can emerge, where new capacities can emerge. Um, and, and that's how I personally have been approaching things. I would encourage other people to start to think about the unknown as an exciting place to be rather than something to be sorted out. <laughs> Now, that is a new practice. Thank you, first of all, for sharing also about what you've been through. I really appreciate the transparency and the humanity in that. And um, that's deep for me. I've always been attracted to Sherlock Holmes, Perry Mason, and mysteries. I'm 15 steps ahead of the writers. I always know how everything's going to turn out. And if I don't, that's my favorite film because it, it actually right. fooled me. So for, I think my mind likes to work like that, or it does inherently anyway. So for me, all I can say is listening to you explain that, Rebecca, felt like a very loving practice. The allowance was tremendous. I could sense to truly be with what is and allow this childlike wonderment or curiosity towards whatever the conditioner experiences and to not have to know, like that's so big. Right. 
Right. I mean, there are other people that, you know, want to know. Doctors want to know or emergency workers want to know. And, and you know, it doesn't mean to say you don't necessarily take action. I mean, on the weekend, I ended up in hospital for a couple of nights. And in the moment, it was one o'clock in the morning. I was like, well, what is this? what is arising in this moment and in that moment what was arising was an inclination to go to hospital not out of fear or panic but this is what is arising in this moment in this thought so you honor whatever it is that's arising in that moment it doesn't mean to take action or not take action it's to be in the mystery and then the clarity of action is there mm. and it's in agreement with your with your highest consciousness Wow. So while this human blueprint of ours is changing rapidly, do we have any abilities right now that we're not yet aware of that we did not previously have? And if so, what are they? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I get really excited talking about this and having mapped it for so many years in a clinic setting as well to, to watch what's happening with the energy field and the chakra system and how it's translating its capacities. Absolutely. I mean, our ability to be multidimensional right now is incredible. Um, I've been playing with this. Many people I know have been playing with this, being aware of being in two different places at once. This is a great thing to play with if you're separated physically at the moment from loved ones or from friends. Um, we have the ability to see um, beyond what we could see before. Absolutely. Well, those days where we wake up and the light is different, understand that you're actually being able to see changes in frequency now as well. Uh, one of the biggest indicators right now in our capacity is our skin. And we underestimate the intelligence of the skin. It's the most, as the masters say, it is the most intelligent organ in our body. Doctors and scientists don't really understand it yet. They're coming to terms with what it actually does. It's the interface between our cosmic selves and this dimensional reality. And in that way, our skin it filters and has so much intelligence for translation of information much more so than the brain the brain's just the processor and the way that we feel things with our skin at this time the way you can feel things close to you is that's not just about your electromagnetic field that's the receptors in the skin really starting to come online now so when you start to feel those ripples of energy we feel it as goosebumps sometimes or changes in temperature understand that your skin is coming online and it's sensing the changes in the dimensional fabric right now so pay attention when that happens because when that happens it means something new is appearing in the reality around you so all sorts of things like that our taste is changing uh, our olfactory capacity is changing uh, our bone density is changing. The cells now are able to operate uh, actually with less oxygen than, than they could before. There's all sorts of things that are, that are happening at this time. Yeah, I felt like um, reading your book, I felt like, oh, I'm such a satellite dish. I'm such a sensitive girl because um, when you talked about the skin, I was so grateful that you addressed that. I haven't seen that anywhere else. And I have been through... I would say in the last two to three years, extraordinary changes. And again, doctors, oh, you have too much testosterone in your body. Oh, you need these pills. Oh, you know, and I've sort of dabbled in all of it to see. And it's like, no, this is ongoing. And I've never had this before yeah. in my life. Same. And I, I came out in acne two weeks ago, completely, completely covered in it. It's completely gone now, <laughs> but you know, there's no explanation. Same. And you know, it's, yep. it's easy again to go down that we need, this is a problem that needs to be solved rather than, oh, this is fascinating. I wonder what this is. I wonder what's emerging in this space. And I have to say, every time I have one of these physical symptoms, because I'm like you, I'm very sensitive. I know many of us who are listening to this are, there's a wonderment be aware that every time a change like that is happening in your body, there's a recalibration to a new frequency that's happening and something new will emerge from it. A new way of being, a new way of seeing, a new sense of stability within yourself. For me, I what I notice personally is my voice changes. Every time I have one of these waves of physical, whatever you want to call it, discomfort or issue, 
the the tonality in my voice is different the vibration in my voice is different afterwards every time you mentioned cells and i was curious if you can explain to people what is the super conscious cell <laughs> Oh, the superconscious cell. Well, it's the blueprint for the cell uh, that is the same with all cells in our body. And actually the cell is a replication as a question of scale of the spherical nature of fifth dimensional, fifth dimensional reality and beyond. And every cell within your body is actually a portal to the cosmos. And if you think about the fact that we're an oscillating cloud and oscillating field of portals to the cosmos imagine if we got into agreement with ourselves and all of them lined up can you imagine what a direct direct access direct portal we would have to cosmic wisdom whenever we want it it's incredible and the regenerative power because you know when we're when we're so in agreement with our cosmic nature everything is new in every moment so the cells within our body regenerate moment to moment not in repetition to a blueprint because if you think about disease the cells keep regenerating themselves with the same imprint from the dna and yet when we're so in agreement with our cosmic nature they're completely new in every moment. And this is really what the human body is designed for. It's designed to be regenerative and it's actually designed for immortality. The human is designed for immortality. So and how are we screwing that up? <laughs> <laughs> because we are, we are so, we are so, I, I would not like to use the word obsessed. We are so conditioned to believe that life is a problem to be solved. So we go on a cycle, a cycle. And when we're on a cycle of separation and trying to solve the problems that we are, and we're not in agreement, we, we replicate and repeat experiences that we've already had. And that's what DNA does, it stores experiences and blueprints for what we've already had. It's, it's become very memory-based, our DNA, and it's actually not really designed to be memory-based. It's designed to be a blueprint and a foundation for new creations all the time. But we get locked in this time loop where, where our body keeps repeating the same patterns and genetic imprints and traumas and diseases and rather than create something new every day. And yet, you look at all the wonderful and crazy symptoms we're having right now, it's new all the time, right? I never wake up feeling the same every day. <laughs> and in your book, when you write, we invite, this is in quotes, we invite you to discover your truth in an entirely new way. Can you talk about what is our truth indigenously to each of us? How do we learn what our truth is? Well, we are cosmic consciousness, cosmic beings. This is one aspect of our consciousness at this time, uh, participating in this particular reality. But our greatest capacity and our greatest gift is to create new. So if we want new, we need to be in agreement and understand who and what we are so that we can actually do that. Otherwise we're waiting to solve the problem first before we give ourselves permission to do anything new. It, it's yeah i'm thinking we, we all need to be the elon musks of our own life and the steve jobs and you know please throw a few amazing females in there who have been incredible creators uh, and leaders because essentially not only do i hear you saying when you talk about our patterns and something else emerging is that there there is the individual pattern that's become a memory and dna but also there's a collective pattern that we're all living out. So when we step outside of that to allow, create, invite something brand new, that's very powerful at the personal level, but also again, at the collective level, like the pebble that drops and the ripples that come out can impact exactly. everybody. Look what's possible. Exactly. And you can't actually really, uh, this is something that's really interesting. You know, even when we talk about ascension, it's this whole premise that we can somehow get out of it, that we can somehow uh, yes, ascend it and 
and you know let's just finish off our karma and I'll be a good girl and you be a good boy and we'll be able to get the hell out of here and never have to come back but again that separation moving away from ourselves and our origin the only way out is in so it's a reclaiming it's a sovereignty it's a I'm okay being human we're not a problem we're actually the master creators we actually we actually can create the earth we're not just visiting now this is a big thing because there's a lot of information out there about how how humans are visitors to this planet and and that's what i had always believed and and yet a lot of the information that's been coming through in recent years is actually is actually we really need to reclaim the planet we actually really need to in reclaim our inherent right to be here and to create it because if we feel that we're not if we feel that we're the problem on this planet we're going to continue this cycle of separation and the planet becomes a problem to be solved so rather than trying to ascend and get out we always talk about let's descend let's bring more of our consciousness here let's flood this simulated reality with so much consciousness that the containment and the blueprints of repetition and, and limitation can't sustain themselves anymore because you know the, the the rule of thumb with frequency is that anything that's a lesser frequency than the overriding frequency cannot continue to exist so let's look at the limitations and the duality and the old blueprints and the old karmic history and all of that Let's look at that as a little bit denser than who we really are. And so when we descend and we bring more of ourselves here, none of that can sustain itself anymore. And indeed, that's exactly what's happening on the planet now. The simulation cannot contain the amount of consciousness that's here anymore. And so it's absolutely stretched, absolutely stretched at the seams. Wow. So Rebecca, it it is felt to me since the inception of all of this this year in March. I felt like we were being given a timeout. You know, <laughs> go in your room and think about what you've done. <laughs> and I feel like on a personal level, for sure, a lot of people working things out, and definitely on a humanity slash planetary level, really important to right the ship and make new choices and new creations. And so what about 2021? So if this has been quite an amazing ride, to put it mildly, for most people, and certainly way longer than I think anyone had anticipated, are we in for another heck of a year? Are we still on the path? What is, what is your perception about what's ahead? I'm going to go into channel for this, if that's okay with you. It would be beautiful. Thank you. I might record this myself too. <laughs> Greetings to you. We are with you. Time for humans is an interesting thing. However, the enormity of the shift that is occurring at this time, we would understand it to be happening momentarily. Everything within your earth reality is slow. This is the nature of your third dimensionality because it is process driven. And therefore, even this paradigm shift, you as humans will see as a process. Process demands your participation. It demands your participation. Therefore, it is not something that you can observe happening beyond you. It is happening as you, through you, of you. The shift itself is the shift of the awareness within the heart of every human. And therefore, it is when humanity embraces its divinity that a completely new era becomes visible. We say unto you that there are still three to nine months within your earth frame of reference that will enable humanity to come to this natural conclusion. Because it is not a conclusion of an era or a life. It is not the conclusion of an era. 
it is the conclusion of an understanding that the human is divine. Now, in what moment does a human understand that they are who they are? At what moment does a human move into complete acceptance of their own divinity? If you look into the history of humankind, it is usually at the end. It is usually upon death. It is usually when there is nothing left to hold on to, when there is a great exhalation back into the breast of the cosmos. And so humans at this time still cling to external structures, external beliefs that they believe keep them in place. And yet the cosmic wind is blowing, blessed ones. And indeed it is a time to understand that it is a time to let go back into yourselves. Humanity is safe in the breast of the cosmos. It is only your reality that is being blown by the wind. You will understand that 2021, what you understand to be the next solar year, is one where humans arise from themselves. In order for a human to arise, they must first return to the center point. And indeed, 2020 has been about the great return, the great return to the center of humanity. It is only when humans realize they cannot rely upon what is beyond them that they return to the self. And yet it is an experience of being in the desert. Is it not walking in the desert? No reference, no map, no roads, no pathways, no signs. And perhaps it would appear that there is no appearance of life. And yet, lo, look beyond. Look back, look to yourself. You are the source of life that this planet requires at this time. It is a great misunderstanding that the planet should require less of humanity. The secret to the earth at this time is that it requires more of humanity, more of the conscious human. In the desert, it looks as if there are no signs of life if you look beyond yourself. So 2021, blessed ones, is a time of re-emergence. It is the return of the human. It is when humanity says, I am here. I am irrefutable in my existence. Humanity is not a concept or a belief, it is a reality. And when humanity understands that it is the baseline for your reality, it is the foundation for the life of your planet, you will reclaim your reality and reclaim your sovereignty. Because where the holes in your belief appear, fill them with your hopes. But you, blessed one, you have a question for us. I do, always. <laughs> do, do the beings, the extraterrestrials, the extra dimensionals, do they worry for us? Do they assist us? Or do they look upon what is happening to us right now with reverence and with knowing that we will all be okay? Well, because there is a great flooding of consciousness on your planet at this time, understand that many of the aspects of what you would call extraterrestrial or intergalactic are indeed aspects of humanity. Mm -hmm. And indeed, this is what the convergence is. Your awareness of that which lies beyond your human form is the embracing of the true nature of yourselves, mm -hmm. for you are not earthbound. And indeed, this is what the shift in your paradigm is at this time. It's an understanding that you are not bound. You are not contained. You are not trapped within a karmic cycle. That is a simulated belief. And it is not the truth of your reality. Earth is a part of many whole cosmic systems. And so what we say to you is, as humanity returns to the self, as the foundation of your Earth principle, you open up your awareness and your expansion so the earth is no longer a containment for experience. It is once again the birthplace 
of experience. Would you call the womb within the human body a containment or would you call it a birthplace? Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> of course, of course, blessed one. And so what we say to you at this time is that there is a great gathering, there is a great celebration, because the non-containment of your earth reality is an, is, is an inevitability. And there is nothing that humanity can do or not do to affect this inevitability at this time. The question is, how present would you like to be to it? How aware would you like to be of it? because there have been five other cycles within your simulated earth reality where humanity has had to become very unconscious to the shift. In other words, we would say that there has been a physical death of sorts for the human existence, a reset of sorts for your genetic composition, because the transition itself could not be witnessed by the human consciousness. But it is different in, on this occasion, and that is why humanity continues to exist in the face of the paradigm shift. So it is not death, it is immortality in action, mm. because you are still here and you are witnessing it in your physical form. That is a statement of divinity, is it not? When you put it that way, <laughs> absolutely. Is there within with within what you're suggesting? And I really love this perspective that you're offering us. It's a very different spin than what we are being bombarded with in the media every day. To be speaking about this time as though it is divine, and what our roles are in it, and uh, our life never ending. Is there a ritual or practice that we can engage in daily that will help ourselves through this time that will facilitate this changing reality in our changing beings? Blessed one, there is nothing more important during this transition than for you to know that you are life itself. Because if humanity can become the pillars, the reference points, the anchor points for life within your planetary reality, you become the foundation for creation for the next era. The new renaissance, the golden era of humanity is dawning in this moment, but it requires humanity. So it is not a question of whether or not humanity will survive. It is only a question of whether or not humanity can realize the truth of its own existence. Because to be alive, to be life, is to reclaim your place, not only on the planet, within the planetary system, but within the galactic system and the cosmos. This indeed is what has kept humanity in separation from its awareness of its cosmic self. Humans have seen themselves as alone, as isolated. Quite paradoxical, in essence, to believing that you are the center of the galaxy, the center of the universe. You believe you are the center of life and yet you do not live as if you are. Mm. Because if you truly believe that you are the center of life, you will celebrate your existence in every moment. Celebrate the existence of humanity. That is the most important act in every moment because humans have come to believe somewhat erroneously that they are a mistake, mm. that they are imperfect. And this could not be further from the truth. Mm. This is the great misunderstanding of your third dimensional reality, that you as a species are a problem to be solved. When the greatest truth is that you are the divine the greatest creative species in the galaxy and beyond. 
And that is why we celebrate you. And yet you do not celebrate yourselves. Thank you for that. May I ask who we were speaking with? We are the ones who have always been and always will be. You may call us masters, perhaps of the earth reality, because we understand the mechanics of its construction. But we are also, in essence, deeply human as well. Interesting that humans, even the most aware humans, believe that wisdom sits beyond humanity. In this moment, let us claim our humanness as well. Yes. Touche. Because you are not the imperfect children of the galaxy. Quite the opposite. You are the ones that are celebrated. You are the ones that bring cosmic consciousness to this reality. Mm. You are the portals to the all. Do we have conscious aware access of the portals indeed within every cell within your body but you, the mind the mind prevents you from moving into the unknown the mind is frightened of that which it does not understand and indeed it is the mind that is the mechanism to keep your attention and focus within your third dimensional earth reality when yet there is so much more Wow. So on the other side of this, oh, oh, to overcome, and I completely understand what you're saying. Oh, to overcome that fear and allow where, I mean, I can even sense my own curiosity and fear concurrently as you talk about that, the fascination with what, what would that be like? And of course, at some lifetime, I have experienced that. And if there are concurrent lifetimes, I'm experiencing it right now and it's all safe and wonderful. And at the same time, I can sense the fear about, ooh, what would that be like to let go at that level and have an experience of going through a portal into another reality or? Well, we have a word for it, blessed one. Mm -hmm. Freedom. Mm, wow, my favorite word. That's amazing, it is. Can you understand how humans believe that freedom ultimately means a release of control? Mm. That if you are free, you must let go of control. Humans are afraid of not being in control, and yet they have not understood that they have no control. I Even see. in this moment, the human will consider, how can I change my reality? How can I change my situation? How can I change the earth? Mm. Within your third dimensional reality, you can do very little other than repeat what has already occurred. True freedom is the release of control so that you can bring your focus into what is truly available rather than choose from a very limited array of options. Amen. Really powerful. I feel deeply moved, honestly, uh, and such a shift with what you're saying. It's like getting a new set of glasses to perceive, like, honestly, everything right now. Would you agree in this moment that you exist? Yes, absolutely. Then we thank you for your presence within the planetary system at this time. Mm. Indeed, you are enough, blessed one. Mm. You have always been enough. Your presence is enough. Anything else is superfluous. <laughs> that is so beautiful. Thank you. Thank Very you. well. I really received that. And I hope everybody listening and watching that is for you as well. What a beautiful gift. 2021, blessed one, is a time to be aware of your presence. Celebrate 
your life in every moment. It is enough. Mm. Peace. Thank you. That was yeah. great questions. Thank you. <laughs> that was so spectacular. That was a true gift. And uh, it feels like a beautiful mantra for all of us going forward to listen and re-listen to that. And I would like to ask you, dear heart, Rebecca, since this is Dare to Dream, what do you next dare to dream? What are your future dreams and goals? I mean, you're putting out all this beautiful work, you're working online and all of that. What is your dream next to unfold? For more, <laughs> more experience, more life. And I want that for humanity. You know, I want, I want everybody to experience more. More of what? Who knows, but more. <laughs> and for people who would like to follow you, get more involved, uh, what, what, where are the best places for them to do that? Well, I have a website. It's my name, RebeccaDawson.net. Um, and actually, you can download for free the first chapter of the book, All About the Body, on there, on the homepage. So that's really easy for you to find. Uh, I also have a YouTube channel, but there's lots of free resources on that, on that website. Uh, and I do seminars and workshops and personal sessions as well. So I'm uh, very easy to find. <laughs> Rebecca, D-A-W-S-O-N dot net. And... Yes. I thank you so much for coming on the show today. And I'm so grateful of the perfection when your people reached out and I got a hell yes. And here we are. I, I just know that I know that I know this was the conversation that was supposed to happen. That was beautiful for me too. Thank you so much. What a beautiful alchemy today. Mm. For me as well. And yes. folks, uh, her book, The Agreement, brand new book. And I'm going to end today's show with this quote from Rebecca Dawson from her book, The Agreement. Know that you exist. Be present. Allow the flickerings of cosmic mind to arise within you because as that third dimensional belief grid dissolves and humanity experiences a mass migration of consciousness to a newly forming one, you, are the reference point for human mind. You are the body of knowledge. You are the representation of the new humanity that holds all possibilities. That's why it may be a quiet, introspective time. You might even say isolated because you are embodying the new blueprints for possibility. Know yourself. Know your nature, claim your totality, claim your cosmic self and watch your dreams become a reality and your reality fade into a dream. Subscribe to the Dare to Dream podcast so you can hear or watch this weekly number one transformation conversation. My guest next week is Ruben Langdon who's returning for a part two interview, he's a well-known actor, international stuntman, filmmaker, and video game star. And Ruben is the host of the Gaia TV show, Interview with Extra Dimensionals. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. And remember, don't just dare to dream. Turn all your dreams into your reality. And as Rebecca so beautifully outlined for us today, use your curiosity and wonderment to be exactly with what is. Thanks for joining us today.